Welcome back tubers and it's time for another Powerwall video. Today I'm going to actually be trying to make my Powerwall better. So that's my old Powerwall that's been in service for about four years. And that's my new-ish Powerwall. So that one is that one there. That's a 24 volt one, that's a 48 volt one. Now, what I'm noticing over time is this spread between high and low. We've got two cells there that are clearly fault. One of the fantastic benefits of the Batrium software is you can just visualize it. It's just, we've got two faults, bang, it's done. Um, now, what I wanna try and do is over the next few weeks, I've been processing cells like mad, trying to get these all done. So these batteries here, there's um, 2,000, almost 2,800 cells. So these will be slightly larger, so they're 200 P packs rather than 80 P packs. And they will still go into my mounts as usual. Um, I've been through that in previous videos. Take a look up there and I will um, give you a link. So what I've noticed with this battery is I have these two, so it's two 24 volt banks and they're joined together with little wires. And that's actually proving to be a very good way of keeping the batteries balanced, ignore my mess. Well, a better way of keeping them balanced. Now, all of these cells are either rejects from here over the past couple of years that I've, that I've swapped out. And then I think that the, the, top, the top seven are all new. So I think the bottoms, bottoms are the ones I've pulled out and I don't wanna waste them, so I'm still using them. And the top ones are all new cells. So, and they're keeping much better balance. So that's, uh, what's that? Um, that's saying 37% state of charge and that's saying 35% state of charge. Um, but we've got, what, almost half a volt spread there, if my maths is right. And we've only got 0.1 of a, was that point? Yeah, 0 0.1 of a volt spread on that one. So what I wanna do is I wanna use 15 bucks worth of um, hookup wire. It's probably underrated, it's only quite small, but I don't think I'm going to need large cable. Um, it's just the initial commissioning of it that's going to transfer a bit of current around, so I might have to double or triple up that, make one cable and just balance them up and then do it slowly. Um, and then I've got a whole heap of these little end terminals. So the idea behind this will be uh, for the first uh, 36 cells, no, 42 cells, I'm gonna change it from 80p packs to 240p packs. And what this will do is the community's actually proven that having the bigger packs is much, much better for keeping it balanced just by the, the, the numbers and stuff like that. Now I haven't done a full capacity test. This is my full-time battery. I don't wanna take it offline. So I'm just gonna upgrade it and see how we go. So the first 42, so that'll, t that'll actually t go from 42 cells to 14 cells. I'll take out 28 of the long ones. And that'll actually, it'll actually have the benefit of making it a little bit cheaper, in, in fact, to BMS your battery if you copy this way of doing it. Now I plan on changing from the Watchmon 4 to the Watchmon 5. Now that isn't a necessary change, but given that I'm taking out 14, uh, 28 long ones here, it means I don't need to go with the Watchmon 4. I can use that for a different project that I do have in mind. Um, and I can reuse all those long mons and stuff. And this one here, I think is gonna have more than enough balancing current to sort that out and to keep it all balanced with the 240p packs. Now this is a battery that has been cycled every day for four years. And it does between two and 400 amp hours per day out of that battery plus all the stuff from the solar panels on those two pip inverters. So it's going really well. This one here doesn't get cycled so much. It's just having a bad day because of lack of sun. Um, well, lack of sun for the past couple of days anyway. Uh, and I'm also with this battery over here, I'm running that little inverter and I'm gonna do, an in I'm gonna do a review on that inverter. That's actually running really, really well considering. Now I've got a little power board there. I run this fan during the day when it's hotter. Um, so that cable there goes up to these lights. Um, and we're also doing the charge and discharge off the solar as well. So, you know, nice little ecosystem that keeps bouncing around. All right, let's get down to the power shed, take a look at what we've got down there, work out what we need to do to transfer this across and get it done. Before we get started, we really do need to do some actual maintenance.
that'll do. Upgrading the Ryobi battery, some 30 Qs, really does a good job. More on that in a different video. Radio, that'll do, this ain't Burke's backyard. So for anybody new, we've got 30 kilowatt hours in the shed. They're all recycled 18650 batteries, and I plan to take this from an 80p pack to a 240p pack. First thing we'll do is disconnect that breaker and then we've got cell number, what is it, 35 down there, which is the low one. Now the other one is 48, which is this one here, which we won't be addressing right at this point in time. Um, just gonna do this one. So I'm gonna do two things. One, I'm gonna hook it up and balance it with the other cells, The that one. So that's, what's that one? So we want to hook it up with that one, that one, and that one. So it's number seven. What's that? One, two, three, four, five. Yeah, so number seven, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21. So seven, 21, and then 36. Uh, 34, sorry. So seven, number seven, seven there. So seven's not so bad. Number 21 is a little bit low. I would have liked to swap it out with say something like this, number 16, that is nice and high, but it doesn't matter for now. Um, and then what we know that cell's already low, so if this doesn't sort of fix the problem enough, I think we're gonna get some more capacity out of it because this isn't gonna dro drop below 3.9 volts and actually trip the shunt trip here um, because of low cell voltage. So it should get more out of the battery, but I'll get a lot more if I actually replace that cell, but I don't have a cell to replace it with at the moment. So the plan is, I've made one cable here. I'm gonna join that up there on that side, and then I'll hold by hand a second cable from here to here. I'll grab the little clamp meter, and we'll have a look at the amps, that the lower cell there is just gonna push from this one to that one. So we can work out whether or not this wire is going to be big enough or not because this is absolute worst case scenario it's never going to push this much in reality it might push one amp around if you know if that probably a tenth of an amp so let's get that done first but the, pro the plan will be actually just touch that on that see how much heat we get, see whether or not we get the, the current draw. Anyway, so I'll just tap it for, for now. We'll see if we can get that in focus. Two amps. Well, that was a lot less dramatic than I expected. 1.78 amps. 1.77 Now I've got my thumb directly on that cable onto the bus bar and there's no heat at all there yet So in my mind that's that's safe enough that's a good enough test to see whether it'll work now bear in mind the max max draw on any one of these cells is about half an amp so I can't see it ever going over you know, one amp balance charge, and even then it's for a short period of time under heavy loads, because um, it'll be constantly balancing. I think we are good, I think that's a good enough test. Um, if I left that on there long enough, you could probably watch the battery balance. Or well, this one come down, this one come down and the one below it come up. But there's still no heat in that at all. Now, um, you probably hear in the background, I do have the little Ryobi fan there blowing air across me because it's pretty warm out here at the moment. Still at 1.7 amps. 
and then we'll just release that so it's going to drop. It's going to feel all those cables. There's nothing there at all. I reckon we're good to go. Let's get after it. Let's replace all these cables, make a whole bunch up, join them all together, and then we can watch this balance and see if we get some more capacity out of it. Okay, so we're about a day and a half later since I started installing those cables and testing it all out. Now, I ended up sitting on the lounge room floor. It was much cooler making all the cables in there. Um, and then I had a couple of disasters, you might say. I had an MC4 connector fail on my solar array on my off-grid side. So that took a couple of hours to actually pull one MC4 out. I had to take a whole heap of panels off. Poor design on my behalf. Maybe I should change that. Um, and then get that all fixed back up again. And then my car died. So I lost a spark plug and a coil. So that's been done but it does mean i didn't get anywhere near as much oh data i guess you'd say on this um now let me just assure you this is now a 14s 240 p battery so i'm hoping it stays a lot balanced a lot easier and a lot cheaper so i will um what have i been doing i've actually been using the isdt charger here to bump charge this cell so i put about eight amp hours into it i just turned it off beforehand because i want to want to get this little meter and then have a look at the balancing current between the, th the the batteries and that's just saying 16 there oh 0.16 of an amp um i'm saying 0.14 i'll just do the easy ones so there is very little balance in current and if anybody's ever done this on the bench before commissioning their batteries they know it doesn't balance too quickly with these small wires i was hoping it would be a little bit more than this in this sort of situation but it does beg the question did i underestimate the uh, productivity of those little cables i'm now thinking i'm going to have to double them all up so i can run twice as much amps through that cable um, if we do a really fast discharge, though I'm running a couple of air conditioners at night time or cooking or whatever, and maybe pulling, I don't know, 6,000 watts from the, the inverter or the batteries, um, that, balance, that could go out of balance and not have enough current to actually donate from the other two cells into that one. Um, I, I, I'm no expert, but I learn by learning, so I'm a plan on learning. I would recommend you don't go and do this yet, guys. Wait until I've taken this out a couple of weeks and find out some true data. Now, the plan will be the easiest way for me to take, get rid of all of these long mons. I mean, I can do it in the software, um, but I want to actually take them all out of service so I can use them on another project. I should be able to just unplug this one here, this little white plug, and then plug it in down here. I'll just have to extend some cables out a little bit more and then I can just take those out of the loop nice and easily. I may not do that straight away. I'll put the Watchmon 5 up here and then we'll run the 14S configuration. We'll just run the loom through the middle there um, and see if that's up to the task of keeping all this balanced. I reckon it's going to do a fine job of it. Um, I may actually put it a little bit lower because hot air rises, so the cooler it is the better, being a centralised unit, and I'll put a fan on it naturally. Um, but then I'll probably reach out and do a pre-order on the Minimon or Minimon 8, I think they're called, um, up here, which is like a daughter board to the Watchmon 5. And then that'll actually run this battery here. So the end goal is this one's going to be decommissioned and used to upgrade all the other packs or I can take them out and test them again and stuff. Um, this battery here was my very first 24 volt I ever used um, four years ago. I think it's plus four years ago now. Um, so that'll be decommissioned reuse recycled it's not going to be decommissioned completely but you know it, it'll the better backs will be used to build this pack up and then i'm going to put that other 25 kilowatt hour battery up into this location here that i've got in the shed there i'll have to relocate a bit of this stuff but that won't be too difficult so tubers this isn't the video that i wanted to do i wanted to get heaps more results for you i wanted to have data i wanted to have load tests over time but i've simply run out of time so tubers, thank you very much for tuning in. Make sure you tune in to the next one, probably two weeks time to give me enough time to get some data, to actually get this together, change it all up a little bit, make sure it's all spot on. And then if you've got any questions, you want me to do any specific tests of this, please feel free to ask, I'll be happy to do them if they're time effective and practical. So tubers, thank you very much for tuning in and I'll see you on the next one.